Man 2 meeting with critical acclaim, the thingamajig became a popular household name, and the most iconic mascot for Ubisoft, and surely another stirring sequel in the works was inevitable. For the first time, series creator Michel Ancel took a backseat as the director of the on the development of Rayman 3 due to being busy with another IP known as Beyond Good and Evil. However, he did help the team at Ubisoft with the redesigns of Rayman and new ideas for the environments and characters. This is by far the best design for Rayman as it combines the cartoon style of the PS1 with the storybook polygonal model from Rayman 2 and it makes the perfect combination. Just look at this smug bastard. But I digress. The now renowned title Rayman 3 Hoodlum Havoc was released in 2003 for the PlayStation 2, original Xbox, PC and Nintendo GameCube. The game was overall well received by critics and even got HD remasters for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 9 years down the line. Go play it if you haven't already. Look how cheap it is. There's even a free demo! Oh man, all that positive energy has made me bored. Would you be able to take over a van? I wanna go with anyone, I wanna go with anyone, yeah! I would be absolutely honored, Ernie. I'm going to mainly be focusing on the PlayStation 2 version of this game. I used to own the original Xbox version, but it ended up breaking unfortunately. But they're all the same across the board, unlike Rayman 2, which had a lot of ports and lots of changes. I'd say the only things different are maybe like minor graphical changes or also um also mini games which we'll get to later. But they all look and play pretty much the same, yeah. So let's jump jump right into it. I'm gonna have a bad time with this game. Rayman 2 gave me nightmares left and right. How are they gonna scare me next? Huh. We're greeted to this awesome intro with this kick-ass song, Mada, from Groove Armada. I would use it, but haven't, just to avoid copyright. So instead, I just use this silly Nightcore remix. The link to the real song is in the description if you're interested. It's a banger. What sucks is that this song and the intro was completely removed in the HD versions of the game. The story introduces us to a black lum known as Andre, who sets out to conquer the world by switching red lums into black lums. Meanwhile, Rayman and Globox sleep peacefully in the forest, unaware of the goings-on. Upon attacking some Sulkins, which are forest-dwelling teensies, and stealing the wall off the Bonton to transform into the first Hoodmonger, Andre begins to pursue on Murphy as he attempts to look for our heroes. He manages to find them both, and is successful waking up Globox, but Rayman ends up being a heavy sleeper, which causes Globox to run off with his hands. So it's up to Murphy to lend Rayman a hand, no pun intended, and fly on out of there. We're immediately thrown into an on-rails flying segment. I already have one problem with this though. Uh, this plays nothing like the rest of the game, and it's kind of strange to place at the beginning. Wouldn't you usually introduce the player to the core gameplay and then new challenges with different playstyles later on? Murphy in this game is played by the legendary Billy West, and fits the role perfectly, poking fun at video game tutorials and cliches, and breaks the fourth wall by reading the game's manual to assist Rayman. Once upon a time there were lumps. Harmony, love, peace, boring! Suddenly, a black lum transforms the red lums into hoodlums. The world is in great danger. Ooh, here we go, here we go. It says here that Globox took off with your hands. Knowing what a scaredy cat he is, he's probably hiding someplace. The game before was more fra fairy tale esque whilst this game is the video game equivalent of Shrek, what with the pop culture references and making fun of other games. And here, it tells you to hit the shoot button when you want to attack. Come on, don't tell me guys get paid to write this junk. <laughs> Off, Mary. Did you get? Hey, if I were you, I'd call it quits and head straight for the Spider-Man 2 auditions. Yeah, you'd break in the door and people would stop thinking you were my pet rabbit. The comedy can be hit and miss, but in my opinion, it's more here, and this type of comedy was the new meta and way ahead of its time in a video game. For the moment, we can only jump, kick, and glide using our chopper hair, but eventually we are reunited with Globox and he gives us back our hands, so now we can use our fists. I'm really glad they went back to using your fist as attacks like in the original Rayman, and the punching mechanics are really fleshed out here. You can shoot your fist straight, strafe and angle your punches to hit switches to solve puzzles, or hit them around shields or any of the hoodlands armour. The combat in this game is so fun. We are then introduced to power ups that can be found um, across the game, known as combat fatigues. Combat fatigues! 
That's exactly what we need! Usefulness can range from using chains to swing from rings, to controlling a rocket to hit panels or enemies, converting your fists into tornadoes to lower platforms and topple over enemies on stilts, increasing the fist power to defeat stronger enemies or hidden goodies, and being able to fly for a period of time. The time limit on each varies, with the tornado power up lasting the longest and the fly power up being the shortest. Glowbox is about to be attacked by Andre when he accidentally swallows him. So now, Rayman and Glowbox have to travel to the different worlds via the heart of the world to find the teensy witch doctors to get Andre out of Glowbox's belly. Usually, stories in platformers are quite straightforward, like say maybe saving a princess or just beating a villain for the sake of it. What I'm saying is, it's nice to see Rayman Free try and mix up with the plot as far as the genre goes. It's simple yet effective, and it still fits in with the context of platforming games. Andre is a black lum, and black lums are twist. Also, that's racist, Murphy. Before we head off on our great adventure of Havoc and Hoodlums, Murphy says this one line which really pisses me off before leaving for the rest of the game. See you in Rayman 4! You son of a bitch. Oh, uh, Ivan, are you alright? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm fine. It's just that I'm thinking about reality. Yeah, that would never be. <laughs> There, there. Don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling. The way you go about traveling from world to world in this game is through this psychedelic, trippy tu like, tunnel with funky music playing in the background uh, whilst you're riding a board. And I will admit, it, these are pretty fun. Like, what you can do is just like you can go through like different parts of the um, of the track and like try and collect, see if you can collect as many gems as you can. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Also, also, um. This was the most memorable part of the game for me, to be honest. It, like, it's just, look, I mean, just look at all these colours, man. I, I, I'm into this weird shit. For every world we finish, we are greeted with a hilarious cutscene with the different witch doctors attempting to get Andre out of Glowbox. The personalities of them range from having a German accent, Fell, fell, fell. Let's see what we have here. To being an absolute pothead. Dude, still in bed? Well, must have been a late night. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> These are always an absolute joy to watch, with what all the out of the box ways they try to treat the fat blue frog. After beating the land of the livid dead and the bog of murk, the game up to this point has been quite light-hearted, until these freaky fuckers known as the Naran appear, and start rocketing towards you and saying, Also, whilst carrying eggs, Zombie chickens will try to attack you with this music playing in the background. Now I'm getting Rayman 2 spider chase flashbacks. Rayman then meets Gumsy, the Naran King, and challenges Reflux, who is the strongest of the species, to a duel. After Reflux is defeated, we find the third and last Witch Doctor, and with all three of their strengths combined, succeed in exorcising Andre out of Globox. Unfortunately, Andre escapes, befriends Reflux, and convinces him to betray Gumsy and steal the scepter of the Leptis. This allows him to spawn a massive army of even more black lums to aid him in his conquest. Andre then tells Reflux that he will be able to get his revenge on Rayman soon enough. After taking the longest shortcut, crossing the vast ocean and ascending the snowy mountain, Rayman and Globox manage to find the secret entrance to the Hoodlum headquarters, where Globox weirdly begins to have a crush on the hostess's voice. Exterior temperature, minus 61 degrees. Interior temperature, 90 degrees and rising. Wow, that lady's got a lovely voice. I'd sure like to meet her. Didn't you have a wife and children in the last game? I see these game games work better off as standalone games as opposed to continuations on the story. Apart from certain mechanics and characters, none of the games have any connections to one another. On a side note, Glowbox in this game is played by John Leguizamo. Leguizamo, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. The same actor who plays Sid from Ice Age. Rayman, these disguises are getting a bit ridiculous. I mean, they're not even good. I recognize them right away. Violence in movies and sex on TV. After reaching the heart of the headquarters, we fight the horrible machine by overloading it with well aimed punches. After that, Andre commands his hoodlum minions to flood the headquarters with lava and Rayman begins to hurry up to the top. The lava is just about to reach him, when fortunately, the impact of the machine's explosion saves our hero and launches him in the direction of the Tower of Leptis, which is the final area of the game. 
Meanwhile, at the peak of the tower, Reflux uses the power of the scepter to grant him unmatchable powers, which also begins to change the form and colours of the sky. Within the tower, Glowbox manages to find a plane which he and Rayman use to reach the top, which leaves us with the final fight with Andre and Reflux. With the bite of a chain and bullets of a plane, Rayman and Glowbox pull through and defeat Reflux, causing him to crystallise and eventually shatter. Rayman makes a grotesque face causing Andre to revert back to his Red Lum origin, completely foiling the plan of the Black Lum invasion. Finally, we come full circle with the duo sleeping under the same tree prior to the start of their journey, with Glowbox lamenting the loss of Andre, who, had, who he, he had developed a one-way friendship for. Rayman tells him he should be happy with the now known joy the Red Lums are expressing, and that bringing Andre back would be a bad idea for the world, and with that, they both go back to a well-deserved sleep. We are shown one more cutscene of how Andre came to be, with a flashback of Rayman's hands watering off and frightening the Red Lum that would become him. And that concludes the story to one of my favourite childhood games. The player is then given a congratulations message, giving them a code that lets them submit the high overall high score on the Rayman Zone website to let them compare their score with the rest of the world. However, typing in this address today will just take you to the Ubisoft website, so getting the high score is pretty use is virtually useless now. Did you know? By exploring the Headlam headquarters, oh. it's possible to come across a picture of Razorbeard and all of his minions from Rayman 2 gathering around a table, which is supposed to be parodying the last, the famous Last Supper painting. Furthermore, with enough points scored, you can access a room in the Tower of Leptis with several unused enemies and characters. I absolutely love it when games do this. Similarly, the Ratchet & Clank games have this place called the Insomniac Museum, where if the internal clock is set to a certain time of the day, you'll be able to ac access it, and it just shows like, all the unused content that didn't quite make it into the game. I always find this stuff really interesting. Man, I'm back! But I'm here to help out with the video. Yeah! I wanna help out. I'm back from Disney World, yeah! Hey, Ernie! Go on, I'm just back to the gameplay. What the fuck is that bitch doing in there? Ernie, I can explain. I was just giving the man some company. Come on. Please, we, we can, we can, we can do this review together. Oh, damn! I'm glad! Alright, let me at him, man. Let me at him. Let me at him, yeah! <laughs> Come on. Come on, fat. What you got? What you got, fat? Come on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna whoop your ass! I'm gonna whip your ass! Yeah! Wow! No, Ernie, please no! No! Uh, 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 uh. No, Ernie, please! 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 The control in Rayman 2 was already excellent, and seeing them improve upon that is astonishing. Rayman's helicopter glide has been switched from toggle to holding down the button, which I think makes for a better control scheme. Rayman 2's combat was so easy and shallow, and I'm glad to see some tweaks have been made to make the combat more fleshed out. The plum returns in this game as well, though it's not as useful here. Before, what we were using to sail through lava oceans has now been reduced to being thrown on a wooden spike to be used as a platform. At least they're funky music whilst carrying them. Rayman 1 was too hard, and Rayman 2 was too easy. Rayman 3, on the other hand, is a perfect balance of difficulty. It's not too easy, yet it doesn't feel too hard and punishing. Like the other games before it, you free citizens from cages, but this time, it's trapped team seas. Freeing certain teensies will allow you to progress through levels with the combat fatigue power-ups, and freeing six will get grant you more health. I also love that whenever you free them, they'll always have something funny to say for what they intend to do once freed. I have to go a poster on sofa. All right, let's talk about the score system. Whenever you find gems, defeat enemies, or zoom in on certain objects, 
you're, you score points as well as go into combo mode. When combo mode is activated, these actions are worth even more points, which is vital if you want to unlock the mini games. But if points aren't being old, earned for a period of time, combo mode ends. If Batman Armored Knight makes you feel like Batman, and Spider-Man PlayStation 4 makes you feel like Spider-Man, and Robots the video game makes you feel like Rodney Carverbottom, then I say Rayman Free Hulum have a PlayStation 2 makes you FEEL LIKE RAYMAN! The bosses are a slight step up from the last time. The Hood Stomper boss can be kind of annoying though when trying to aim the rockets at him, and the second base is an absolute cakewalk. If you're struggling with it, just press the jump button near any hoodlums. He doesn't seem to shut up either. Razov comes in. Oh, I like this underwater one. You have to manipulate the missiles uh, Kaloke spits out to fly towards him to deal damage. Also, Kaloke. I love the pun. The first fight with Reflux was quite challenging, and I almost got my ass handed to me. The Hula Machine was quite interesting, it had a lot going for it, and I love the climax of the first two phases of the final boss. The third phase, not so much. We're introduced to the play mechanics so late in the game, and here we are. It's the final part of the boss. It's, it's, it's okay, but it can drag on sometimes. The Hulam enemies have some cool designs as well. The render for the default one is great. They look scary, but at the same time, have features that don't make them feel out of place in a Rayman game. My favourite enemies are the Hoodoo Sorcerers that protect other enemies with a shield until you find them and take them out. Another thing I forgot to mention is that this game went back to a more light-hearted adventure as opposed to a more serious and darker story like Rayman 2, which I'm pretty fine with. I mean, this is a game about a character with no limbs that uses his torso as a basketball. The worlds in this game are quite different from one another. There's clearly forest, your usual forest level in Rayman games, the Bog of Murk, a Piranha Infested Swamp, the Land of the Livid Dead where you climb a castle in the stars that goes from being an optical illusion to a real castle, the Desert of the Nuran, the long the longest shortcut, which is an obstacle course that tests your wits, which is one of my favourites. The summit beyond the clouds, where you protect a pirate ship from hoodlums, then reach a snowy mountain, and finally, the hoodlum headquarters. And them graphics, man. This along with the Wind Waker is honestly one of the best looking games from the 6th generation, and still holds up extremely well today. The things you do in this game are unlike any other. You go from unintentionally becoming a peeping Todd to trespassing into a hunter's mansion and racing down a snowy mountain on a snowboard to rescue Glowbox. There's never anything that doesn't feel fresh. Also going off topic, I'm not sure if anyone's mentioned this before, but I've always thought that Gonax looked like a Muppet. The mini games aren't anything to write home about though, but I will say 2D Madness is a fun challenge, and the bonus video clips you earn are always a joy to watch. However, the GameCube version has one exclusive minigame where you can hook up the Game Boy Advance to the console. The player on the TV has to control Rayman around in a shoe cart, whilst the player on the Game Boy builds the track with the pieces getting progressively smaller and more difficult to use. At the time of this video, I don't have the GameCube version to try this out, but it sure looks like a blast to play with friends. The soundtrack in this game is beautiful and atmospheric. No surprise they are considering it's a Rayman game. Like Van said in my Rayman 2 review, I too will pay full price for this soundtrack. There's like 200 songs here! I'm all I'm all for qu quality over quantity, but if we can have the best of both worlds, sign me up. Now I don't usually do this, guys, but I'm gonna talk about the port that was released for the Game Boy Advance. It's a um, Rayman free, so let's let's check it out. There's no charge. Don't let the title fool you. This port or remake, whatever you want to call it, takes story elements from Rayman 2 with Razorbeard and the pirates coming back. You barely even see the hoodlums in this game. I don't understand why people overlook this game though. It goes back to being a 2D side scroller like the first Rayman, and it's actually a very en enjoyable and fun game. If you're a fan of Rayman, I'd give it I'd check it out. It's really an underrated game. Overall, Rayman 3 Hoodlum Havoc for the PlayStation 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. But unfortunately, Rayman 3 for the Game Boy Advance was the last was the last main series Rayman game. But what about the Raven Rap We shall not utter that game series. Rayman 3 was such a great game. And surely, like, with games that consistently good, you'd want to like keep it going, wouldn't you? But unfortunately not. Ubisoft decided to hold back. And we didn't hear another we didn't hear anything else about another Rayman game for another seven years. The question is, 
what happened to the Rayman series? And the main series, Rayman games. Do, don't, don't you dare ask me to review those, that series, okay? Well, join me now as we delve into the next game of the series, Rayman Origins. 